I have searched many years on end. There was none that my soul. guys happy easter easter 2020 it's so crazy we're not even together but we are able because of technology to actually come together somewhat we hope you are having a great day, uh, morning with your family we're excited about our lineup today uh we're gonna have some worship and then we have a cool little kids video we want to show you uh into our video announcements and then pastor steve is going to be delivering 
a word. So that's going to be really exciting. Um, what an amazing day for us as Christians. Like, there are so many gods, and so many of them died, but Jesus is the only one to raise from the dead, and that is what we're celebrating today. Our incredibly divine, amazing God who was risen from the dead. He is alive. He lives in us, and he is risen. So happy Easter. I hope that you guys get to go outside today and enjoy this amazing uh, morning with your families. Uh, it's just going to be all good. And then after our service today, you want to stay tuned. Um, right after our service, we're going to have a small kids service. So uh, if you have kids, make sure you stay tuned for that. It's going to be really good. But again, I just wanted to say happy Easter. We love you guys, and thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, why don't we worship? How about we pray? It's been a little bit manic here, you know, trying to get the production ready for this morning. So let's just pray. and Let's just invite the Holy Spirit to come and be with us this morning. Jesus, we just love you. Thank you so much for raising from the dead. Thank you for who you are. I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come right now, wherever we are at. God, we aren't able to assemble together this morning physically, Lord, but I pray that your Holy Spirit would just bring unity across every computer screen, phone screen this morning. God, and we would just feel your presence. Lord, that we would, no matter what's going on in our lives, no matter what's coming up, that we would remember who you are and never forget that and never forget who you've called us to be. We just ask for more of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for raising from the dead. We love you. We glorify your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. stars they wept the morning sun was dead the savior of the world was fallen his body on the cross his blood poured out for us the weight of every curse upon him breath he gave as heaven looks away the son of God was laid in darkness a battle in the grave the war on death was waged the power of hell forever broken the ground began to shake
like you know one Who is like you? Who is like you know one? Jesus King would die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true, and it's my joy to honor you. die for me amazing love I know it's true and it's my joy to honor you amazing love amazing love how can it be that you my king would die for me
soul, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. Beautiful one, beautiful one I love. Beautiful one I adore you, beautiful one. My soul must sing. Jesus, we love you. We worship you, Jesus. You're so worthy. Help us to never forget, God, that cross. Help us to never forget what you did for us. If that was the only miracle you ever performed for me, Jesus, that was enough. You dying on that cross and you raising again. I am so grateful and I'm so humbled for who you are and what you did. Jesus, you owe me nothing. I owe you everything. Jesus, I love you. We trust you, no matter what, God, no matter what's going on in our lives, no matter what's going on in our family, no matter what's going on in our culture, God, we trust you. There is nothing else, God. There is nothing else worthy of our trust but you. We love you, Jesus. If you could just say, I love you, Jesus. Wherever you're at, just say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Say, thank you for the cross. And thank you for conquering death. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that worship. Uh, It was so good. Lisa, thank you so much. It just astounds me how faithful God is and how amazing he is and how he just shows up no matter where we're at. Whenever we call out to him, he shows up. This morning, uh, if you are a regular church member and you are uh, trying to give your tithes and offerings, just like we said before, there's many ways to do that. You can mail it in. You can text us. You can go online. Um, But yeah, we just want, I'm just going to pray over all the tithes and offerings because we haven't done that in a while. And Lord, we just thank you so much for every giver. We just pray that you would bless these finances, God. We're all in such uncertain times right now in our culture and our society, Lord. And we just, we just are giving out of our need. And we just ask that you would bless that, that you would direct us where you want the money to go, God. That you would close any door, Lord, that you don't want us to walk through and you, as a church and you would open any door, Lord. Increase our influence. We surrender to you and we love you in Jesus' name. All right, like I said before, we have an extremely cute video coming up. You guys ready for it? Let's roll the tape. 2020 Easter Kids video. What is Easter? It's about, it's about getting new toys. When God died and he um, rose again. (laughs) It's picking eggs up. You just dye water and then you just put the eggs in. Last year I made a dinosaur egg. (laughs) (laughs) We gather around and we sing. Jesus. What's your favorite part of Easter? I like, I like being able to like hang out with my family and like eat dinner and bunnies, eat bunnies, <laughs> bunnies, and we look inside what's in the eggs. Eating candy. We had to go be Who 
Who's your favorite kid's pester? Pester T. Happy Easter, everyone. First of all, I'd just like to thank you all for tuning into our live stream. We're so happy that you're watching. My name is Ryan, and I'm here to bring you your announcements. Today is actually the last day to sign up for School of Transformation Light, or SOT Light. SOT Light is a 12-week course designed to help Christians who want to go deeper with God, find more clarity in Scripture, and community with believers just like them. If you're interested in the course or just want to find out more, head to our website, changeoraville.org. Do you enjoy watching our live stream? Then check out our podcast called The Uncommon Truth, where pastors and staff from the Father's House Church discuss Christianity the way that Jesus meant it to be. You can go to our website, changeoraville.org, to subscribe, or if you need help with that, leave a comment in our live stream and someone will get in touch with you to help you out. Have you heard about our new Bible study? It's called Life on the Rock, and it is a foundational Bible study about what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. If you're interested, you can find it on our website, changeoraville.org. Our last announcement is that our pastors and leaders want to connect with you through our Zoom video chat groups. They're going to be reaching out during the coming weeks, and if you want to get connected, you can email us at community at changeoraville.org. Well, that's all for our announcements today. Please remember to like the live stream, share it with your friends, and comment below. We hope you have an amazing Easter Sunday celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. Enjoy the service. Welcome, everybody, from the Father's House Church, and Happy Easter! Ah, so good to be here on this day and to remember what we gather for and why we, every year, 52 weeks a year, we're here. It's because of what happened and what we celebrate this day in Christendom around the world. I want to shout out to Jovi. Can you hear me, Jovi? Your favorite children's pastor. I saw that. That was good. And I love being the favorite children's pastor. And uh, thanks a lot, Joby. I see you. <laughs> All right. Today, we're not going to be in Matthew. Shock of all the world that I would divert on a Sunday morning from going right on through the Gospel of Matthew. But I'm going to switch on over to Luke chapter 24 today. And I'm going to ask you to come on with me. All right. So let's re we're reading from... Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and read that. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, bringing spices which they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men suddenly stood near them in dazzling clothing, and the women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. And these men said to them, Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you while he was still in Galilee, saying that the Son of Man must be delivered in the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words, and returned from the tomb and reported all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now they were Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James. Also the other women with them were telling these things to the apostles. But these words appeared to them as nonsense, the apostles. And, the men, and they would not believe them, the women. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb and stooping and looking in, he saw the linen wrappings only, and he went away to his home marveling at what had happened. This is the story of the resurrection, of the discovery of the resurrection. Punctious Pilate reluctantly ordered Jesus to be crucified because the religious leaders of the Jewish temple, the very temple of God, who worships the very presence that lives inside of Jesus Christ, 
wanted him crucified. And so he's crucified by evil men. Even evil men in religious clothing. And what he's done so far to cause them to want him to be crucified is he's told them to love their enemies. He's told them to love their neighbor. He's told them to love God and give to God all that is his. He's fulfilled over 300 prophecies that the prophets of old told. As, as they lived in this almost experiment called Israel, this peep children of God, the children of Israel, who continually had God speaking to them, had God's prophets come to them, and they ignored the prophets. They would, they would have bad things happen to them. And then they would cry out for mercy and have good things happen to them. And then in, they would do right for a little while, and then they would fade back. I think sometimes we're in that same cycle. I think we today, the Gentile world, Judeo-Christian world, is in the same cycle of we kind of believe, but only so long as things go good. And we're in that same cycle where we need a crucified Savior. We need a lamb, a perfect lamb of God to mark the doorposts of our life that the angel of death will not visit us. And when I'm talking about death, I am not talking about the end of our life. I am talking about the second death, the Bible calls it, where, where it has no sting for those who have Jesus resurrected in their life. Today I come to you with some really good news. This story... I believe to be true. Jesus is a historical figure. His crucifixion is a historical event. He did not appear only to 12. He did not appear to a small sect of people who believed in him. The Bible says that he appeared over and over for 40 days throughout the city of Jerusalem to over 500 people. And he was, he was seen all over the place. It's fun to read Stories of the day, historical things from the, from the historians of Rome and the historians of Israel who tell the stories of people who cited Jesus, who had him visit them or come to dinner. Right after this story is two men on the, way to, on the road to Emmaus who have him with them all day long, teaching them the scriptures, teaching them about what I just said to you, that this was prophesied for years, that this was stories told for years, that one day Jesus would come. And the good news I'm here to talk to you today about is Jesus has come. History has proved he's come. We know that he has come from the books, from the stories. All of history, interwoven, said there was a historically a man named Jesus who claimed to be the son of God, who claimed to have the power of God, and that his followers afterwards preached his message and performed many wonders and signs. This is all historically evident. But this risen Lord, I have found in my 45 years from the day that I discovered that he is alive, that he really is alive, that he is alive for me, that he is alive around me. Ever since I discovered that for these 45 years, I have found that it is a very personal experience. We gather in groups called churches and Bible studies and fellowships, and we talk about his presence being so evident in the world. And yet I remember 45 years ago, it wasn't evident to me at all. All the things that today I see and know that is his hand. I remember as a child walking through the forest wondering what this feeling was, but the, it did not become evident to me. When I'd be out in nature, I'd look at the Grand Canyon, I'd look at the Grand Tetons, I'd go to Yellowstone National Park or Yosemite and feel the wonder of creation. I did not attribute it to the fact that he's alive. But after I met him, this became almost the proof of my life. That everywhere I went, I felt him. But then I knew him before I didn't know him. Now I know him. On a day back in 1975, I prayed a prayer, challenging him, asking him, come into my heart. He did. And I knew the world was a different place. From that day forward, I have not doubted or forgotten he's real. And 
I do forget sometimes that he was once dead, but now he's alive. If you read his words after this day that are recorded in the Bible, it's one of the most important things, what he says in Revelation to John. The one who was dead, but is now alive. Today we celebrate Easter. It's the resurrection. Friday we celebrated the crucifixion, which was a dark and ugly day. It was not dark weather-wise. It was dark in the hearts of men that would crucify a Savior and actually drive nails through the flesh of a human being. Can you imagine the darkness that it would take in your heart to be able to drive nails into a human being's arms, into his feet, to beat him through the night, to try to take the skin off his back with a whip, to shove crown of thorns on his head that wasn't even part of the crucifixion process. It was just added cruelty. Can you imagine the, the condition of a man's heart? And I think sometimes that was me. The condition of my heart growing angrier and angrier. How easy it would have been for me to become one of those men. I thank God that he reached me young. I, my, the, the cup of my iniquity was not necessarily full yet. I was simply starting on the road to anger and hate and self-hate. But can you imagine what it takes to become a man who would literally crucify another human being? Literally beat a man like that. It says they punched him through the night. It says they pulled out his beard. These are things they didn't need to do. It wasn't part of the process. It just was a little fun that they get to have. And they inflicted him horrendously. In fact, Isaiah, many years prior, prophesied that when this would happen to Jesus, you would hardly recognize him as a human form, that he would barely resemble the form of a man by the time they quit beating him, quit torturing him. And then he went to the cross, and we read the, the account so beautifully of his forgive them, of his telling the other man, you'll be with me, I'll take you with me. Then you see a little bit of concern. Father, why have you forsaken me? The father turned his eyes from him. He had to endure separation from God for the first time in eternity. As a man, he never felt separation from God. I felt it. But here 45 years ago, he came to me. And I found out he's not dead. He's alive. And I love this story. I'm, I, it's why I switched over here today to this, because I didn't want to let this Easter where everyone's afraid, everyone's worried. I didn't, want to, I didn't want to let this pass without telling you he's alive. And it really is. I really have found it to be a very personal thing. It's like I can't convince you he's alive. I can simply invite you to come with me into my experience. Come with me. I'll tell you how to find out he's alive. How you find out he's alive is a surrender to him, a, a release of your own rights, of your own personal space, of your own need to be the world to be all about you. And you for a moment say, I just need to know if you're alive. And if he makes himself real to you, it has to be a firm commitment that I will follow you. These men here were so confused. Just three days ago, they were denying him, pulling swords saying they don't even know him, scattering and hiding, falling asleep while he's praying. They had no idea what was going on, kind of like us, kind of like some days for us. I just had a day two weeks ago Friday where a friend died. I couldn't figure out what was going on. My only comfort was to know it's not up to me. It's not my call. He's alive, and he's got this. A few months before that, my little seven-year-old granddaughter died. Very difficult, but the only thing that gets me through, the only thing that keeps me going is the knowledge that he's alive. A few years before that, my house burned down. I was looking down on the pile of ashes. It was your house. Could have crumbled me. The man I used to be would have fallen in a heap for any one of these things, any of the bad things that have happened in my life. But I know that he's alive. This knowledge this belief that is more than just an acceptance of the fact, but it's a put my life into it. If you're alive, I'm with you. Come on, sign me up. What I literally did on that day was put my hands out. Okay, chain me up. And the guy praying with me said, 
No, no, no. He wants to set you free. You are already chained. And I found that guy was right. It is what Jesus wanted to do. The living Savior, the living Lord, the Lamb of God, wanted to not only take away my sins, but set me free from all of my wrong thinking, all of my addictions, all of my wrongness, just the hate and anger and burden of my soul. What's really amazing is what he would say to me when he first talked to me. It probably took a couple of weeks for me to literally hear him speaking to me. But what it was about was things like alcohol or smoking cigarettes or pot. I was smoking a lot of pot then. And he would say to me, you don't need that because I'm enough for you. And what he was saying is, I'm enough for you. And I have to tell you that if you have a faith in Jesus Christ, but you are not living his truth, you are not following his way, you are not loving the Lord God with all your heart and loving your enemies and loving one another, you're not obeying him to follow after what his will for your life is, you're in a much worse place than had you said you did not believe. So I'm really talking today to those of you Three, three different groups. Those of you first that believe. Hallelujah. Aren't you, aren't we, don't we have a day to celebrate? Is this not a banner day to remember the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the hope for our sins, the, the resurrection of our own dead souls, the, the life that we get to live? It's common around here for us to look at each other and say, can you believe the life we get to live? And some of us have crossed over into that. And it's amazing when you see new life come from death, the dysfunction of life that causes death. And so I'm talking to you. And I'm also talking to you who don't believe. You don't, yeah, you have no evidence. You have no reason to believe that God is real. I'm telling you, you can. He's alive. His Holy Spirit is around us. On that day, 45 years ago, he was around me. But when I prayed, he came into me. I knew only one thing after that prayer. I felt lighter. My sins, it felt like my sins came off of me. As I went outside, I noticed the world looked different. And I'm telling you, come to Jesus. Come try Jesus. But not just anyone telling you you can believe but li keep living your own life, because you can't. You can keep on for a while, but you have to surrender and give him a right to change you. If you're going this way, you've got to be able to be turned to go the other way. You've got to let him change you. There is no Christian Christianity that's going to work for you that's going to provide what he says here, and I want to get to that in a minute. He's going to provide something for you that is so miraculous. He is, all of his command, what he says to these people when he greets them, he says, don't be afraid. Let, don't let your heart be troubled. Fear not. I've risen just as he said. The angels... What, in the other, cha other uh, um, versions of this book, the angel said, he's risen just as he said. It, he's risen just as it was written. Just what he said he would do, he will do for you. Come to me, all who have burdens, all who have fear, all who are shook up, all who hate, all who are angry, all of you that should have been loved but weren't loved, come to me and you'll find rest for your souls. This is his promise. You'll find forgiveness for your sins. John the Apostle, if we sin, we confess our sins and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from every unrighteousness. That does not give us, per that is, and John went on to say, you think I'm giving you permission to sin? By no means. I'm telling you, if you do, if you fail, he's with you. He's alive. It's a living word. You are a li he is a living sacrifice for you. And it's a day-to-day -day growing from, from a newcomer to a, to a seasoned veteran. You grow up to be an adult in Christ who can ha rightly handle the word of truth. And the third group I want to talk to today, I want to tell you, those of you who will say easily, yeah, I believe, but you don't live your faith. You don't live like you believe. In the book of Revelations, Jesus said it would have been better for you had you said you didn't believe. Because those of you that are lukewarm, that say you believe but won't go all in, it's going to be way worse for you. It literally says he's going to vomit. I've always kind of heard that as, and I'm not sure this is what he meant, but it's what I've heard. 
that my lukewarmness makes him sick. And here's, let me just give you a, a, a vision of it. He let men drive nails in his hands. He let men beat him through the night. This wasn't a momentary affliction. It went through the night. He went all day, up till sundown of the next day when he finally died. He let men do this to him. And this is what was ready for him. All he had to do, the Bible says, is say the word and 72,000 angels would have come to his rescue. But he would not say the word because he wanted to save you. And if you say you believe this, but you won't live it, you are wasting what he did for you. Because the word believe that we use to say I accept that he's real isn't the same as what he says if you believe you'll be saved. Those two words aren't lined up. What he calls belief is coming to love him with all your heart, mind, soul, strength. To love one another as he loved you. To forgive as you've been forgiven. To judge as you want to be judged. And I'd like to be judged with mercy. Therefore, I need to judge with mercy. And if I will do those things, it'll, I'll receive from him, pressed down, shaken together, running over, an abundant grace and glory. I will, I will, the grace will actually work for me. He will not see my mistakes. He will not see my life. He will see the life of the Son of God. I will wear the breastplate of Jesus and the helmet of Jesus, the salvation and righteousness and goodness. And the sh I will have the faith will be my, my, what everyone sees, my faith. But if you are lukewarm, then I'm speaking to you too. If you are classified as a person who says they believe but don't live you believe, you're living with your girlfriend, you're living in sexual moral immorality, you're living in drunkenness or intoxication, you live selfishly, and you hoard and take for you so that, to make sure you have instead of trusting him to take care of you, then I want to call on you to begin, just surrender. There's no public setting on this video. Wherever you're watching, you're watching alone. Let the Holy Spirit visit you right now where you're at. Let the Holy Spirit come to you in your living room, in your car, wherever you're at laying in your bed. Let him come to you. Just close your eyes right now. Let the Holy Spirit around you be felt. And if you would, surrender your life to him. He's alive. He can hear you. He can read your thoughts. He's alive. I have known him these 45 years and he has never failed me. I don't always get what I want. If what I want is different than what he wants. If what I want is simply whatever you want, Lord, I'm with you. Then I always get what I want. Because then always what happens in my life is what he wants. Always. But if I want him to bend to my will, it probably isn't going to work out for me. It probably isn't going to work out for you. So right there in your room, right there in your chair, in front of your screen, just close your eyes and ask the Lord, I want to know you. I want to know if you're real. I want to surrender my life to you. I want to give you my life. Is there anyone out there who's feeling the Lord today? Are you feeling his incredible presence? If you'll close your eyes and just feel the air around you and ask him, do you love me? Are you there for me? Will you help me? Will you Come into my heart. If I gave my life to you, can you even make something out of that? It's, it's always, every Easter, I'm a little bit sad that he had to go through this so that I could be saved. I wish he didn't have to do it. The innocence I had with a child, as a child, I wish I could have kept it. The goodness that was in my heart. I was one of those soft and good children. I was a good kid. I was full of love. But things happened. I wish I would have kept that. But I went the wrong way. I needed to be saved. I let things hurt me. And I held that hurt against the people that hurt me. I, I let my dreams be, become the focus of my life instead of his dreams for me. I wish I could have kept that innocence. I used to sit and marvel at the crucifix in my church and just marvel at it. 
And I used to say out loud, I wish I, I wish I could understand this. But I didn't keep pressing in. I went the other way. He chased me down just like he's chasing you down in your room right now. Just like he's chasing you where you're sitting here, wherever you're at. He's after you. He's calling you. I can hear him calling names. He's calling your name. He wants you with him, but not on your terms. He wants you on his terms, by his will, by his calling. He's calling you. Would you surrender your life to him today? He is the Lamb of God. He is Jesus the Christ. He is the Son of the living God, and he was lifted up from the earth and crucified. In that crucifixion, he eventually succumbed to death. And then they buried him, and he rose from the dead. And he said, why do you seek the living one amongst the dead? He is risen. I am risen, just as I told you. He got on that chariot out there on the road to Emmaus, and he taught them all day long how they should have known who he was, because didn't you hear Moses? Didn't you hear the prophets? Don't you know? I think that I, as a kid, looking at Yosemite or, or, or the Grand Canyon, I could have, or walking through the forest, the great Sierra Nevadas, I could have known. I could have known. But I, I, I didn't pay attention. Well, this moment right here, it's Easter Sunday. Would you pay attention? Would you just close your eyes and let him touch you? Let his will become your will? Let his life become your life. Let his narrow way become the way that you follow. He said he's the narrow door. Would you go towards the narrow door and enter by the narrow door? Would you be the sheep of his pen and learn his voice? He's speaking to you right now. Would you hear him? Would you hear him call? Put down your pornography. Put down your lies, your deceptions. Put down your selfishness and be willing just for a moment to surrender and say, help me, Jesus, I'm lost. Help me, Jesus, I need you. Would you cry out to him in this moment, this Sunday morning, this glorious day? Let this be the day of your visitation from the holy God of the universe, the creator of all things. Nothing was created that Jesus did not create. He is the word of God incarnate. He is the lamb, the one who was dead but is now alive. This is what's important to him, that you know he was dead for you in your place, but now he's alive. And to any who will believe in him his way, they will find new life, eternal life. They will receive the reward that he planned for them from the beginning, for you from the beginning. Would you just give your life to Jesus right now and pray with me right now? Would you close your eyes where you are? And say, Jesus, I need to know if you're alive. I need to know if you're with me. It's helpful even if you've walked with him for 30 years to just feel his presence again right now. It's, it helps. Jesus, I need you. In your mind, would you see him on that cross? Would you just imagine him on the cross? And now, would you imagine him walking out of a cave of a tomb. See a cave and a hill and see him coming out. The brightest light you've ever seen, Jesus, the Lamb of God, he is alive. He's with me. He can be with you. Invite him in and say, Jesus, right now, just say, Jesus, would you help me? I need you. Would you forgive my sins? Would you forgive my doubts and my selfishness and come into my heart and live in me? Would you be my Lord and my Savior? I give you my life. Use me as you will. Would you pray that prayer with me right now? Would you say amen to that prayer being your prayer? I will follow you, Jesus. Will you do that? Oh, 
I wish you could run right now to me and I would start to teach you and show you how to follow Jesus. If you're home alone or you're out there not knowing what to do, grab a Bible. Honestly, any version will do, but a translation would be best. And read the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John. Another thing, the second thing I need you to do, even if you believed before, but you don't really live as though you believe, read the Gospel of John and then tell somebody, he's alive, I've given my life to him. I've asked Jesus to come live in me. Would you do that today? Third thing I want you to do is tell us. Either write it there on the screen or call the church office and just say, my name is and I gave my life to Jesus Christ Sunday morning. It isn't so we can count you, I promise. It's not. It's so that you can confirm in your heart what you did by confessing him before others. He says, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father who is in heaven. And if you deny me before men, I will deny you to my Father. It's so important that you and I step up to the plate when we walk up to the, when we arrive, when we walk up to the Lord, that Jesus confesses us before the Father. He's one of mine. Enter in my good and faithful son, my good and faithful daughter. Thank you so much for listening to me. God bless you, everyone. I can't wait, Father's house, till we can meet here again. I love my church. God bless you all. Danielle? That was good, wasn't it? It's so nice that we we're given this opportunity to come together this morning. What a powerful message. Help us to never forget what he did for us. That's like should be on the forefront of our minds all the time. If you got kids, uh, it's uh, time to kind of bring them into the room because in a couple minutes we're going to be doing our kids service. It should come right after I'm done talking. But I hope you guys enjoyed the service today. Wasn't that kids video cute? And, uh, and I know that you guys felt the Holy Spirit. I felt the Holy Spirit uh, here in the room. But uh, tomorrow we're going to have uh, Lisa Kelly bringing our teaching continuing our Loving Jesus series, and that's going to be at 6 o'clock. We're going to do this series for one more week, and then um, we will switch our broadcasts, not to be every night, but to be only a couple times a week. But uh, So tune in tomorrow night to Lisa Kelly, and we love you guys. Enjoy this time with your family. What an incredible opportunity that everything shut down, and we just have to be with our families, have to be with our kids. Go outside, enjoy the sun, uh, and stay tuned. The, our kids' service is coming up next. Hey kids, hey. it's Jessica and Monica here. We're super excited. It's Easter morning, which is, yes, it is such a good day. It is. We're so excited to have you here with us. We miss you guys so much. We hope you're having a really good Easter morning. Hey, we have a special surprise for you. What? Look under your couch and see if you can find that special surprise. Whoa, whoa, whoa. you mean there's surprises on there? All I find under my couch is dust bunnies. There may or may not be a special surprise under your couch this morning, other than That's dust bunnies. exciting. So like I said, mm -hmm. it's Easter morning. Super exciting. Easter is such a good day. I love Easter. It's one of my favorite holidays. What's so important about Easter, though? Well, Easter is the day that Jesus rose from the dead. Wait, what? What? No, no, no. That is impossible. You've never heard the story of Jesus raising from the dead? Uh... I don't know, is it in the Bible? Tell me you guys have heard the story of Jesus raising from the dead. Yes, it's in the Bible. Well, to be fair, there are a lot of stories in the Bible. But you've never heard this one? Mm-mm. How have you never heard the story of Jesus rising from the dead? I don't know. That is crazy to me. Well, do you know why he raised from the dead? Uh, something about a lamb? Okay. So Jesus rose from the dead, he had to die on a cross, and then Ooh. three days later he rose from the dead, and it was so that he could take away our sins. Okay, first of all, I have so many questions right now. When Jesus rose from the dead, like, was it just like, hello, I'm alive again? Or was it like taking a really long nap and he just kind of woke up? And why three days? I mean, that's a very specific number. Why not four? Why not seven? 
I mean, seven's a week. That's a very important number. And my third question is, why did he have to die for a sense? So that is, they're all really good questions. Let's focus on the sin and the forgiveness side of it. Okay. Have you ever sinned? (laughs) (laughs) Maybe. Okay, so, like, what did you do when you sinned? Well, okay, so I got annoyed with my friend the other day, and I kind of yelled at her. Okay. Did you ask Jesus to forgive you? No, why? I didn't hurt Jesus. Well, but when you sin, you have to ask for forgiveness. But it was a little sin. It wasn't like it wasn't like I punched her in the face. I could have. Okay. So I have a little object lesson for you. Okay. Okay. Ooh, so I like object lessons. I want you to hold this water bottle. Okay? I want you to hold it with the tips of your fingers. Okay. Is that heavy? It's a water bottle. Okay. So I'm going to read you guys a story. It's a little Easter story. Okay. I got this. So this story, this, this story takes place after Jesus uh, died. Okay. So Jesus had just died. His friends were really sad. And okay. this story picks up there. Okay. So after Jesus died, a man named Joseph put Jesus in a tomb that nobody had ever used. The tombs were cut out of rock, almost like a cave. And they weren't very buried very deep in the ground like they are now. Before Joseph left, he and some men had rolled a big, heavy stone in front of the tomb. Mary and Mary Magdalene had waited a day to see Jesus. They made spices and oils as a sign of respect to Jesus. Yeah? I have a question. Okay. Can I hold the water bottle with my other hand? No. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay. So, just as they were arriving at the tomb, the earth suddenly shook and an angel came down from heaven. He easily rolled the the stone at the entrance of the tomb and sat on top of it. Yeah. How big was that angel? He must have been pretty big to be able to roll that stone away. The women looked at each other and rubbed their eyes. They could not believe what they were seeing. He was so bright, almost as bright as lightning. His clothes were as white as snow. Yeah. Can I use this hand to help? No. You just got to do it with that arm. Okay. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus who has died, but he isn't here. He has risen just as he said he would. Come and see for yourself that the tomb is empty. The women were confused. How could this happen? They were so sure that Jesus had died and now he's alive again. They looked in the tomb and the cloths Jesus had been wrapped in were lying on the ground and the tomb was empty. The angel spoke again. If you want to find Jesus, he's on his way to Galilee. Yes. Okay, okay. This is a really good story, and I'm loving hearing this, but are we almost done? My arm hurts. Listen, keep holding the bottle. Okay. I'm going to finish the story. So the women hurried away. They were laughing and crying at the same time. They didn't know what to feel. They had been so sad that Jesus was dead, and now they're excited that he's alive. They just knew they had to find Jesus, and they had to tell the disciples the good news. As they were running down the path, they turned a corner, and there was Jesus. Greetings, he said. The ladies fell at his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my disciples to come to Galilee. That's where they'll see me. And then Jesus did appear to his disciples, and he had risen again. Yes. Can I put the water bottle down You can put it down now. (sighs) So how did that water bottle feel? I gotta be honest, that got heavy. I don't know why I'm still holding it. See, so that's what happens when we have sin in our life. You know, at first it feels like it's not a very big deal. It feels like, oh, that's not that heavy. Oh, this thing's not that bad. I'm okay. I can do it. But the truth is sin gets really heavy. And sin actually separates us from God. Wait, wait. So you mean when I yelled at my friend that Jesus didn't really like that? No. And it separated me from him? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And... So sin gets heavy like the water bottle? Yeah. And so when we have sin in our life, it separates us from God. And that is why Jesus came. Oh my gosh. That made... Wait, wait, wait. But Jesus can hold that sin? So when he died on the cross, he took on all of the sin of the world so that we had a chance to be forgiven. All of the sin. All of the sin. So he held like... How many people are there in the world? I don't even know. Like a bajillion? Yeah. So we held a bajillion water bottles... Yeah. Worth of sin. Yeah. And he did that just so that we would have a chance to know God. Isn't that amazing? That's really cool. I like that. And so when we sin, we have to ask for forgiveness. 
And he loves to forgive us. He forgives us every single time. But we have to make sure that when we ask for forgiveness, we intend not to sin again. Mm. We can't ask for forgiveness and then just go do it again. Well, I know for sure I do not want to hold that water bottle again. No, it's true. Mm -mm. So guys, today is a really good day. Easter is such a happy day. It's a day full of hope for us. It's a day that we get to celebrate Jesus and we're so excited that we get to celebrate with you. Even if it's not in person, we still are so glad that we have this opportunity. Yeah, we miss you guys. And we have a really fun announcement now. Yeah, we do. So, when this live feed ends, we want mm -hmm. you guys to go outside in your front yard because there may or may not be some Easter eggs hidden for you. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. I know. So have fun. Happy Easter. We love you guys so much. Happy Easter, guys. We'll Bye. We'll see you next time.